I don't think there's been as seismic a disappointment as Boris Johnson in recent political history. And that's saying something, given some of the leaders we've had. Johnson was such a disappointment because he did at least gesture towards having some affinity with Britain and the British people. As Carl Benjamin once put it, he looks like a member of North FC who's been dragged through Eton. However, when push came to shove, he basically showed himself to be a money-obsessed, elitist, establishment stooge. And in a recent interview, US political commentator Tucker Carlson reveals what Johnson is really like. So I'm over in Moscow. I'm waiting to do this interview. It gets out that we're doing it. And I'm immediately denounced by this guy called Boris Johnson, who was for a short time the prime minister of Great Britain. Around the world, people are watching that ludicrous interview. Vladimir Putin conducted by Tucker Carlson. Now, firstly, given Boris Johnson's track record, who on earth is he to comment on other people's morality and what they should and shouldn't do? But Johnson's complaints about Tucker Carlson's interview with Putin simply made things a lot worse. It just made it seem like the establishment was rallying around and not allowing people to hear a counter case. Whatever your views on the current Russia-Ukraine conflict, you should at least, if you're a sane person, take in both opinions of both sides and at least try and figure out what's going on. Yet in fairness, the actions of people like Johnson did completely backfire and make some people on the right sympathise more with Putin and his aims. I think we saw this in the veneration of Putin after the interview with Tucker, which in my eyes was quite bland and boring. I actually think Putin missed a massive chance there. Personally, I think why people sympathise with Putin in the interview isn't because of his amazing rhetoric, but simply because he's a nationalistic leader who stands by his own country in the face of globalist control. In other words, the complete opposite of someone like Boris Johnson, who pertains to stand up for the interests of Britain, but actually will bow to the establishment whenever it calls. So I put in a, a request for an interview with Boris Johnson, as I have many times, because he's constantly denouncing me as a tool of the criminal. He says no. Finally, one of his advisors gets back to me and says, he will talk to you, but it's going to cost you a million dollars. He wants a million dollars What? in US dollars, gold or Bitcoin. This just happened yesterday or two days ago. This is, by the way, the guy who single-handedly, at the request of the US government, stopped the peace deal in Ukraine a year and a half ago and is, I think, for that reason, responsible for the deaths of hundreds of thousands of people. He won't explain any of that to me until I pay him a million dollars. I think at this point we can say it's two fundamental things that drive Boris Johnson and politicians like him. Number one, it's the fantasy of being a great political leader. Johnson famously idolizes Churchill, though is far from Churchill's quality. And on top of that, he just wants money and more and more of it. Johnson and the modern Tories are more evidence that they're basically detached upper classes with no experience and no affinity with our lands and the actual people who live here. He's not even a conservative, Boris Johnson in reality. He's more of a neoliberal, liberal social policies, liberal economics. And of course, most fundamentally, the barrier for entry to politics these days is that you must be a globalist above all else. And that points to an obvious truth that we have to wake up to. If Britain is to have a meaningful future, a leader will not come from the political class. He will have to come from the people. As always, I'd like to know your thoughts on this below and do subscribe to the channel if you're interested in these themes.